So imagine that. A student who's coming in super wicked excited for school or a teacher who can't wait for the kids to come in. I mean, that, that's the passion of personalized learning, right? And that's what my inquiry question's about. You know, we're looking at Charlotte and how we can really get that passion going through personalized learning that's around our core standards. And we've been working at this for five years. Act 77 rolled out in 2013 you know, by our legislator and the AOE. So I thought, let's, let's open and let's reflect on that experience just a little bit. Just, you know, how's it gone? So being a space guy, the first thing that comes to mind is thinking of SpaceX and Elon Musk and his first attempts to create this lander. Didn't go so well, you know, and I'd honestly say that I kind of feel the same way about our PLP efforts, which is where we chose to start. Our first four years, we had Naviance, we had Google Sites, we didn't do anything with flexible pathways or parent involvement, and our kids have honestly experiencing PLP fatigue, and if we asked them to text us about it, you know, they would send messages like this. They're stupid, they serve no purpose, you really think of personalization as changing my Google slide background, or maybe they just send us this. And so at CDSD, we're taking a different approach. Honestly, it's just, let's not talk about personalized learning plans, but let's talk about a process. And if we want to get to that passion, it's getting kids to connect with learning that they care about, reflect and share it and plan it. And perhaps through this, we can go to work on those core standards of self-direction and getting them to take responsibility for their decisions. We're doing it through what we call PIPs, personal interest projects. This is where every seventh and eighth grade in the whole school is asked to come up with their own project, something they can create, something they can learn, or a service they can provide to somebody. And we've set aside Friday afternoon for Genius Hour for them to work on this. And you know, one thing we learned from last year when we did these was the challenge is really to engage all students. Um, I think we all know that in our middle schools, we've got kids, I refer to them as closet kids, you know, like this little girl here. You know, if we locked them up at the beginning of middle school and didn't do anything and just stayed out of their way, they're going to come out at the end of the year ready for ready for high school. So I don't want us to fall victim in our PIP work to judging ourselves by those kids who are going to be successful anyways, but instead judging by those we know need tremendous scaffolding. And that's why we put the focus on all students. And in fact, my learning lab is 10 of the most disengaged students in our entire middle school. And we wrote our learning target thinking of them and trying to create structures that can help them succeed at a three and even a four level. And we put lots of scaffolding in place. We've begun with executive functioning, trying to get them to identify areas they're gonna struggle and areas of strength. We practice brainstorming because some of them couldn't even come up with an idea. We then kept forecasting. Here's where we're going. You're gonna get a project. You're gonna have to have it planned. And here's a PIP proposal that you're gonna be making. And from that, just a week ago, we did a formative assessment asking them to make a flip grid and tell us where they're at. So I thought I'd share those with you just from a few members of my learning lab. My PLP, I'm learning how to juggle. I chose this PIP because I don't know how to juggle and it's something cool that I want to learn. So far, I have done nothing. Hello, my PIP is making an advanced robot and I am going to make a Lego shooting robot that can reload itself. So far, I have done nothing. For my PIP, I am going to fix and clean a mountain bike. So far, I have brought a mountain bike in and started looking at it. Hmm, so formative says, strike one, nothing, strike two, nothing, I've looked at my bike, strike three. You know, but honestly for us, it's just a reminder that th this is going to be tough work and we've got some ideas in place, we've got some things that we're going to be working forward on how we can work with these particular kids and everyone else to learn the skills and be successful around this. And there are some bright spots. And so I'll close off by sharing this video from just last Friday with another one of my learning lab uh, boys who had a project to share. And 
it should bring all of them back to the base. Okay, let's see. Whoa! So that was no strikeout. That was a big poppy home run. You know, that was that was a guy who five weeks ago didn't have a clue how to engineer or code a robot. So if there, there's things to get excited about and there's work to be done. And if you'd like to come visit us, um, Charlotte, we're every Friday afternoon, Genius Hour is running, 145 to 3. And we have some other great projects going with Marley Evans and Tasha Gray that I'm sure you might be interested in seeing as well. So thanks for watching. Learning Lab's going.